friends, Sam Via here with my guest today, Brooke. What I wanna share with you is a really cool, sweet way to go in and remove weight when you choose to remove a ton of bulk out, or if you have hair that's very stiff and has no pliability in it whatsoever, this is a great way to create a sense of movement to it. So we're gonna create texture, but we're gonna do it in a very controlled chaos sort of way. The idea is getting back into discipline. Even though we're working with a razor and we're gonna create texture, do it in a very disciplined sort of way. Our sectioning. Work with a rectangle section first. We're moving away from horseshoes. The discovery is by working with a rectangle section, we're able to create more double identity. Simply moving the hair left or flipping it right or left. Real simple way to do that, work with a rectangle section. And I don't know about you, but it's time to move on from horseshoe sections. Once you've established your rectangle section, by simply using the eyeballs as your center point of reference to establish the width of the rectangle, you're gonna to go to the back area of the head. I will simply want you to place your comb vertically on the back area of the head. Where the comb comes off the head, that's where you're gonna close off the rectangle. Once you've established a rectangle, simply want you to go in and create front to back and just separate front to back on both sides, your left front and your right front. From there, go to center back and simply draw a line vertically down the center and you'll have the right back area and the left back area. We're going to eliminate the nape and leave it alone in this particular case. Now, how are we gonna start the haircut? We're actually going to start the haircut in the front. We've been talking about how things are tilting back now and moving away from the face. So the idea is to get this haircut immediately tilting back and away from the face. Our tool of choice is going to be our razor. We're working with a razor that has a guard on it. Okay, you can certainly use a cutthroat razor. But we're gonna hold the razor just like we're writing our name or holding a pencil. It's gonna give you a lot more control, a little bit more dexterity when you're working with it. Razor, very temperamental tool. You're holding it too tight, I guarantee you're gonna take out way too much hair. Really have a nice, light, soft touch with the razor and allowing the blade to do all the work for you. We're going to go in and actually sketch, so it's just gonna be small little sketches. You can do deep sketches, but I work with deeper sketches when I have longer hair, shorter sketches when I have short hair. You have an entry point and an exit point. Our objective is we want to go in and we want to cut a line that's going to go from short to long. From short to long. Then the next horizontal section we're going to take, we're going to reverse that and go short to long the opposite way. Next horizontal section, short to long the opposite way. So what you're doing is you're creating an X, a series of X's that actually sit and lay on top of each other. By working horizontally, you're visually going to be able to see the texture and the graduation as an end result. Our first section is going to be horizontal. The thickness of the section will be based upon the density. If it's thicker hair, then I'm going to take finer sections. Finer hair, thicker sections. Thicker hair, finer sections. So take a look at my first section I have, a horizontal section. Now we're going to work in the left front area and watch how we're going to work to the back almost immediately. We're going to work with the fine teeth. We're going to graduate immediately, elevating horizontally. Once we're there, we're going to take our razor. We're going to go in vertically. And we're just going to lay the razor so it sits flat to that section. So look how it sits flat. Now what's cool is that you can rotate the razor. So this blade will actually rotate. I'm rotating just slightly. And now all I'm doing is just cutting it, coming in and I'm just sketching short to long. Now when you finish that section, I want you to immediately move to the back area. And you're gonna go in from center to just behind the ear, working from short to long. So you can see what we're doing in this particular case is we're creating length behind the ear. So it gave us a degree of shortness in front immediately around the hairline. I really believe that things are gonna to continue to tilt back for a period of time now. We've been cutting things to really move forward, but now you're seeing fashion has a sense of tilting to it. A word there that we want you to start to use behind the chair. What do you say we start to think, say, and do differently? So we actually get the conversation started by changing the language. So by, instead of saying asymmetrical, what if we said to a client, let's tilt your haircut? By saying, let's tilt your haircut, I guarantee you the client's probably gonna say, what do you mean, Sam? by tilting it. Now I'm gonna give you a top view of this. Brooke, wanna lean your shoulders forward and head down. And now watch the top view of this. We're gonna start from the center back and we're gonna walk from short to long. Sam, how short do you take it? 
You know how short you can take something. Make sure you're leaving enough length so you have enough bevel. If you need to go in and read it, just push the hair. Allow it to see where it bends, and that's how short you can take that. The shorter you take it, the more growth pattern and growth direction is going to play. The longer we leave something, the more we can control the growth pattern. So I'm going to take it and sketch where I saw that bevel. And now watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sketch a horizontal line that goes from short to long. Notice my left hand makes a fist. By making a fist, what I'm doing is I'm closing off the air pocket that I have in my hand. Now, there's a reason why I'm rolling my left hand when I'm cutting with a razor. When you cut with a razor, you'll notice sometimes it's very difficult to maintain the tension in between your index and your middle, middle finger. So what you want to do is you want to go in, and what really works is just going in and roll as you cut, you just roll your left hand. What it does is it tends to just close off the air pocket that you see there when you roll, and it gives you more tension, especially as you work towards the back of your finger angle. Okay, we're going to continue now so that you maintain balance from one side to the opposite side. After cutting your first two areas, your left front side and your left back area, I want you to immediately come to the right side front area. And then you're going to execute the same type of graduation. Your graduation is elevation is horizontal, so you elevate horizontally on the section. So we'll take our horizontal section. Okay. Coming through now, we're working from short to long, so we're immediately tilting this hair back. Come back to the opposite side that you cut, and just get a feel for where your length is. Remember, you're working with a razor, so a razor, you're gonna have always softer graduation. So it's very difficult to check a line when you're working with a razor. Now I'm just going through, just getting an idea of where my length is and where I'm at, stepping to the opposite side. Place in where our length is, and remember, hold it like you would a pencil, come in, and you're simply just going to come through, and all I'm going to do is just leave it flat to that section, and I'm going to cut out short to long, and as I roll, cut, we roll our finger. So that gives us that little bit of control in terms of tension. Now before continuing on, I'm just going to look at that line, get a feel for that line, come back to my opposite side, getting a nice feel for this line. Okay, now I'm just going to take my comb, and look how I'm using my comb, just to give me a sense of measurement in terms of where I'm at with length. Coming back to the opposite side, that's very acceptable. Now, before I go up, always remember, work towards the back area. So now we're working simply around the head, and we're working with levels in terms of our sectioning. I've discovered by doing it this way, rather than cutting one area, you're able to create a nice sense of balance from one side to the opposite side. If you cut one area and you complete that, now your mindset goes back to the beginning of where you started. And that's difficult to do at times. So let's come back through, take our horizontal section, keeping it nice and level as I work around. Okay, now the center back, we're gonna work from short in the center to longer behind the ear. So you're gonna see we're gonna maintain length just directly behind the ear. We come up. Okay, now this is really easy because I'm going to take a guide of what I've cut in the center back. So we'll take that as a guide, working with the fine teeth. We're going to square our body to the head so that we're bringing this back. And once again, I'm going to give you a top view. Shoulders forward, Brooke. Okay, now take a look at how we're over directing behind the ear, and there's no over direction here. Picking up some of what we previously cut, I've got my guide. Now I come through, angle the comb, and get a visual of the angle of where you're gonna go. And then when you cut with a razor, it's very, very visual, my friends. And once again, I'm just gonna start to just roll, so I just get a little bit more tension once again, okay? And then I'm gonna come through, and I'm just gonna comb this down, this back area, and I'm just taking a look at what's been created so far. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a sense of degree of shortness working from the center back. So it's almost giving you this almost like kind of rounded A-line, but remember, we're not going to go in and cut it so it has this sense of an A-line to it. We really want to go in and just create a nice sense of roundness to it, a nice sense of roundness as it's coming around towards the ear area. Now let's go back to the front area. Start back in the front area. Now this is where we reverse it. So what I want you to do is clip down, place a clip down on what you already cut. Why? Because you're working with a razor to pick that section back up, this will give you the control. So once I cut this, notice when the hair is cut with a razor, it 
falls down, it collapses immediately. So this will collapse over the clip, so if I need to pick up that section again, it's gonna be easy to pick up. Now I'm gonna go behind the ear, short to long, the opposite way. So it's gonna give me a very scattered kind of texture and graduation. I'm gonna bring her head upright. Our elevation is horizontal. The angle we're cutting is diagonal, forward, short to long, length in the front. Coming back now, and once again, just comb from underneath, sets up your elevation. Go diagonal, short to long. Come in with the razor, working short to long. Now I wanna come in, place this down, okay? And now come continue through into the back area. So we continue, once again, we're gonna work, continue to work in levels, keeping our sections consistent and level with each other. Take in a horizontal section again. Now think about what you did underneath. Before I go in, I cut this area. Let's just come through and just place this area down. Now I'm going to go from short behind the ear and shoulders forward and head down, Brooke. Now we're gonna go short. We're still going to over direct square back. So I'm over directing behind the ear. But in this particular case, I'm gonna go short now. So I come through. If you want, you can pick up some of your guide just to get an idea where that degree of shortness starts. Remember, it's the top surface, not the bottom. Eyeball that. Now come through with your razor. Go your degree of shortness. And all I'm doing is just semi little circles working back out to my length in the center. So what's cool about this is the fact that we just threw length over what we had short in that back area. Now we're gonna place a clip on that. And now we come through opposite area, start in the front, work my way to the back, take a section. Release that, now we're gonna go short from the ear to long in the front. You're gonna get variations of length. It is very difficult to cross check this. So it's not something that you can go in and cross check, but it's something that you can visually go in and take a look at. So now watch. See how this was short underneath here now what I'm doing is I'm throwing length right back on top of that. And you'll see how I'm gonna get the sense of texture to it. So once again, working and creating chaos, but creating it in a very controlled fashion. Square ahead to you so you can see the graduation. Okay, this comes up. Notice my degree of shortness that I have here. Visually eyeball that. Fine teeth of the comb from underneath. Head up just slightly. Okay, now here comes my Elevation, so my elevation stays horizontal. If her head was upright, you would see that. Working short to long. And the shorter the strokes that you have, the more weight you're gonna build. So remember, think about that. Is it something where you wanna build weight or do you wanna release the weight? If I wanna go in and release the weight, then drop and give me more uh, vertical, not horizontal section so you're not building the weight. Now we're coming come back to the opposite side where we started. So you can simply see how we go through and we continue with these sections, working with a razor to create a very diffused edge. Now you can see why I put that clip there. So I don't pick up any of what I just cut, simply just coming off the top of the clip. Now I'm gonna go short to long, opposite way. Always be aware of where you're at. So I'm gonna go short in the front, two length towards the back. Once again, razor is placed, just sketch. Circular sections. That circular motion, let the razor do the work for you. Coming back to the back area again, taking my horizontal section, and now working short to long. Think about what we did, where we were. Okay, on our last one, we came in, and take a look what I did, okay? So I go short to long, now I go short to long from center. Once again, pay, placing the length behind the ear. So we come through, no over direction in the center back area. The more I move out to the round of the head, the more over direction we're applying to that. So I want you to stay square to the center back area, and then come in, hold as if you're sketching, and very lightly with the razor, just come through and sketch. In this particular case, I'm working with a straight edge with a guard, okay? And it's just the way that I'm cutting this. I'd work with a six gap, if my razor was not vertically. If my razor was placed horizontal on top of horizontal section, the six or nine gap would be great because it's gonna give you gaps of graduation in there, okay? 
coming back to the opposite side. So let's give you a little hint here. Take a section so that this slice matches up the slice to that side. But please do not forget, you've got to place a clip underneath so that you do not pick up what you already cut. So I'm placing a clip underneath that. So I know that section underneath has been cut. This lays on top of that. Let's come back through on the side area. We're going to come back through, level off our sections. Very controlled. And what I like to say, a controlled chaos. Coming through the front area, okay? Think about what we did underneath. What did we do? Okay? Go back and take a look here. I went from short to long. Okay? So now I'm going to come back on this side, on this section. Once again, set my tool up. Hold it like I'm writing my name. Come through. Elevation horizontal. Come through. Determine where you want the length. There's my entry point. And exit. Every time I come in, entry, exit, entry, exit, entry, exit. And I continue to work out towards my diagonal line. Rolling the left hand once again for more tension. Okay. Now coming to the back area. And now working from center back to length behind the ear. Staying square. Shoulders forward, Brooke. Excellent. Coming through underneath. Okay. Notice fine teeth of the comb. Notice a dark comb because of the color of the hair. Now I can come through, pick up some of what I've already cut short here, get an eyeball in terms of where that starts, come back through, place your entry point, and rotate circular motion. Keep your elevation horizontal and don't drop as you work. Okay, now once I've got that, just start to take a look and feel basically what's happening in terms of the type of graduation you're, you're really creating here. You should see and get a lot of sense of movement to that in terms of how it's moving. Okay? When working with a razor, working with water, there are times when I'll go in and I'll work with a razor and I'll cut something a little bit more on the dry side. It just depends upon the type of hair that I'm working with. So a lot of times we have to understand the reason the industry is where it is is because we've broken the rule to get where we are today. So rules are made to be broken. So, but you have to break them in a very controlled way where you understand why you're breaking them. So understand the rules before you break them. Let's come back to our opposite side now. This has been cut. Place a clip over that. Take our last section on this side now. And I'm going to tilt her head for me to get to the degree of elevation. So I want my elevation horizontal. But so on this last section, so I get a little bit more softness, I'm going to elevate more on a vertical. So I'm going to change my degree of elevation on this one. And notice on that last one, I went short to long over the ear. Now I'm coming short over the ear to length in the front. Once again, entry point. Simply rotating the razor. Circular motions out to your desired length. Okay. Remember the elevation on this last section was higher. Why? When this section comes down, it's going to fall a lot softer. So you're just getting a really soft effect. Now notice what we're getting here. What we're getting is more degree of shortness in the front and more degree of length in the back area. Taking our last section. All of that has been cut. Now we come to our last section. And we're working this section short to long to the back. Okay. So I'm going to come back through. Elevate a little bit more on the diagonal, so my elevation is up a little bit higher. Now I'm going to come through, and I'm going to place my razor, and go short to long. Sam, yes. What about the degree of shortness that here that's going to be exposed, or at least it seems like it's exposed now? Remember, we still have this rectangle area that's going to fall on top of that. Okay, coming back to the opposite side. Okay, this is my last section on this side, elevating up. Okay, let's think about what was it that I did. I went from short over the ear to long towards the face frame area. So let's come back through. Notice how I tilt her head so that I can get to the degree of elevation that I want. Now coming in once again with the razor, placing it in. Let's give you a front or top view of that. Coming in with the razor and just rotating forward. and maintaining length in through the front area. 
Once we've got this, what we'll do is we'll come through, we'll dry this underneath before we go after the top. That way we can tweak anything and see anything that we need to tweak in terms of any uh, weight, excess weight, or texture that we need to apply in certain areas. Once again, over directing this area back and away from me, or excuse me, towards me, so it comes towards me, elevate up more above the round of the head, diagonal, Okay, I'm giving you a top view. Now think about what we did. We went from short to long. So now where do I go here? Come back and take a look. Okay, so from here, I went from short to long. So here, once again, let's take a look. Here's my length, so I know that I'm going to go from short to long to the back. Okay, placing in the razor and very lightly coming through and just rotating away. Circular motion, let the razor do the work for you. And great, we've got our underneath cut. Okay, so now we're going to come through and we're going to blow dry this and we'll take a look at how it's going to shape up and how we can go and tweak it. Our product of choice is going to be our Redken Pillow Proof Primer. This will help to speed up the process of drying. Two ingredients that do that. So we've pre-sprayed some of this on as a cutting lotion. Sometimes I will use it as a cutting lotion. Okay, we're gonna take our dryer and our blow dryer, we're gonna work with a paddle brush, and we're gonna simply wrap dry this. As you can see, just going through and wrap drying the section underneath. Gonna really encourage that we blow dry as we go. Once you've cut something underneath, whether it's underneath a horseshoe section, an umbrella, or a rectangle, Pause there and blow dry what you've created underneath. This is really going to give you an opportunity to reflect on what you've done and think about where you're going to go. So as I'm blow drying, I see areas of where I want to take out weight. Maybe there's areas of balance that I want to kind of just go back and check into. So it's just a great way to change the pace of how you work. I think really what's important is to change the experience behind the chair. Give the client a different experience. By blow drying as you go, it maxes your time. It maximizes your time behind the chair. So you can actually go in and start to tweak what it is that you, rather, you need to tweak rather than going through and doing what we've been typically been taught, is to cut the entire thing wet, then come back and then dry the entire thing. Okay, so I'm just going to go through now and just going to stop, pause, and just start to tweak out areas where I see I need to tweak. Now that we've gone through and we've blown dry, now you want to go in and this is where we tweak it or refine it. Let's think about something. What we did was we actually cut inside. We created our graduation inside. What we have not done is refine the perimeter. So I want you to start thinking inside versus outside. What we've been taught is to cut our outside perimeter and then go in and graduate and layer things. What we want you to do is think inside. Graduate and layer just like we did. Then go back and tweak it. It's going to give you an opportunity to really see where you want to create the perimeter edge. Let me give you an example. Over the ears, this seems to be a little bit heavy over the ears. But what I like is I want to have some length there, but I want to expose the ear a little bit more. So we want to create something that more or less does this. It opens up the ear. So a couple of things need to happen. What we need to do is really take out the, a triangle area right over the ear. By taking out a little triangle area over the ear, taking that out, letting the hair fall over it, you're still going to have length, but it's going to be easy to move around. So let's go through and create that triangle. Okay, so we just come through over the ear area and just kind of start to move it into a triangle and you'll see when it's going to start to move. Most cases you'll find that the top of the triangle is where the comb comes off of the head. That's going to be the top of the triangle. Now when I go through I'm actually sketching out all the hair that I'm going to actually release which is going to be this hair that I have in my hand. This is the hair that's going to be released. Now imagine this, when this hair is released that is gone, look how you're still going to have hair that's going to be movable and pliable, and then you just go through and just tweak out the length that you want to tweak out. So this is the hair that we're going to take out. It's very visual. And it will almost tell you what hair needs to be taken out. This hair here, I want to leave this hair. So I'm just going to come through with a clip. And this is all about refining all about refining and take away what we don't need. Okay, now we come through, we're gonna clip this away. Okay, now I'm just gonna take that, I'm gonna take the length off first, working with a blending shear. Use the white teeth of the comb, come in over, fold the ear down. Okay, see how that's folded down? Take the blunt blade, and that is gonna go up against the skin. 
Going to give you a position where you can see it open. So we're going to come through, fold the ear. You can see how the comb has captured the hair and the teeth. Fold the ear. This is so we're not going to cut it. Place the blade inside. Keep it flat to the comb. And now just rotate out and away as you're cutting. Just simply take it all away. Okay, now I'm going to come in and take the length off of the top of the triangle. So we've got our extended length. Now come through and take it off. It's going to make it a lot easier to take it off if we remove the length first. Now let's come through. And I'm going to keep the blender in my hand. Fold. Come underneath. All of this hair here, we're going to take it off. Okay, and I want to take this down to the wood. And I love working with a blending shear. A blending shear gives me a lot more soft type of graduation when I'm working with scissor over comb rather than working with a blunt shear. Okay, take this all the way down. Remember, the shorter we take something, the more the growth pattern comes in. So really get in here and take it down. Okay, coming behind the ear and taking it out behind the ear. Okay, now watch what's going to happen. That triangle then becomes this. So the ear is just slightly a little bit more exposed. Now all I'm going to simply do is just come through, take a razor, and just come through and take away anything excess that I don't want. Just come through, pinch, and release it. And it really just gives it a nice exposure over that ear. Now this hair in the front, this is tuckable. So this can do this, and this can be tucked. Okay? And this is one reason why I like to work dry and blow dry as you go, because then you can really see certain areas that you really need to take out. Okay? We're good there. Now we come over to the opposite side. The opposite side, repeat the same procedure. Work with your triangle with your hands and you'll see what you need to release. So you can see I didn't expose the ear completely. There's still hair that I want to just softly sit over that. As you go through, what's really interesting when you cut, you'll start to see just little areas and things that you need to take away. But don't be so aggressive that you take everything away that you've got nothing left in case you need it. Just continue to keep moving the hair around and playing with it. Let's go to the opposite side. Great little trick to do on your men. It just goes in and it really helps to take the muffiness, if you will, away from their ears. So it doesn't have so much hair kind of making that area seem really wide, making it seem really fat. Okay, coming back through, just releasing what I don't need. Legs up on the clip, captures that hair. Let's see where I need to release here. I'm going to leave this for now. Some of that I might want to release, but let's leave it. Okay, come back through, take away what we don't need. All right, now here's what we're going to go after first. We're going to work with our blending shear first. Okay, we're going to simply fold over the ear. The blunt blade is going to be placed to the skin. Okay, and once again, just a great trick to control the length you take off and how you take it off. So I'm going to come through, reverse that. Let's give you the open side. Fold down, blade comes in, keep it nice and flat, not going to cut her ear, and just roll away from it. Okay, now this is the area that I'm going to come through. I'm going to take all of this down, reverse the blade, blunt blade on the bottom. Coming through, take all of this triangle area, take that down. Come through, tweak, and take away what we don't need. Stay in control. So important you stay in control. You lose control, you're going to lose control of the section. Coming back through, working with my fine teeth, make sure I capture the hair. Blunt blade on the bottom, placing that on the bottom. And coming through. And now this area is going to go over that area. 
Now, next thing I'm going to do is come back with my razor and just take away hair that I want to take away just to expose that. Working with a razor is going to keep the edge a little bit more soft and not so blunt when we go through it. So come back through. I just pinch areas and just come back through and take away what I don't need. Once again, just really just exposing that. All right. Now we can come through and we can just start to check the rest of the cut and see what else do we need to release? What else do we need to get, uh, get rid of? Once again, that's what's so cool about blow drying as you go. When I find that when I work with a razor, it's really visual. You know, you're really seeing a lot with a razor when you work with a razor. You can see how that just will move, but it just gives the, lets that ear be a little bit more exposed. All right, now let's just come through, and with the razor, all I'm going to do is just going to hold it, and I'm just going to paint out and just go in X's, go one way, then another way. One way and another way. When you work with this technique, I want you to work with a guard, okay? Just to give it a little bit more different kind of grain to it, so I go one direction and come back opposite direction. Just a cool way, once again, just to release weight where I see it. I'm not taking away my length or anything. That's why I'm going more one direction than another direction. What I don't want to do is go back and eliminate the whole process of what we did, elevating horizontally and getting this whole idea of um, texture going one, an angle going one way and then an angle going another direction. Once again, where I see weight, come into it. Opposite direction. can see just the interesting movement that it has. All right, so you can see how we've created the underneath, just going through, creating a scattered graduation, working in certain areas, the left front, the right front, your right back and your left back. The nape area was cut out horizontally. Just leave that out, drop that out. Working in the front area, working from short to long. Every horizontal section goes the opposite direction. So short to long, short to long, short to long. But working in a controlled fashion. So you work in one area, then you work in another area, and then another area. So you're working circular fashion all the way up as you move on top of the head. It's a great way for you to take out some weight when you want to take weight out underneath a bob and maybe leave the length, one length on top of that. Hope you enjoy this little technique underneath. <laughs>